Morning. Morning. <laughs> I'm the big bleeper. I'm the little bleeper. And we are the bleepers on a couch drinking coffee. Well then, talking about business stuff. Talking about business stuff, yeah. So, today's topic, we're going to talk about websites and um, a couple of the misconceptions that are out there about websites. So, what's the first big one, do you think? Oh, it's not an online brochure. And it doesn't make you any money. <laughs> <laughs> and it <does. laughs> All right, so... It's one of my bugbears. We, we had our... Well, hang on. You got that round back to front. So, that's not a misconception. That's the truth that I you just said. I say that's a fact. Yeah, the fact is a website is, is not an online brochure. It's not supposed to be. Unfortunately, that's what they almost always end up being. It's just a great big online brochure. And if you know anything about brochures, most brochures, almost all of them, just end up in the bin. So it's not a good way to build a website. And what was your other part of that? It doesn't make you money. It doesn't make you money. So yeah, so if you don't, if you want your website to actually work for you, you've got to make it make money for you. So there's a couple of ways to go about doing that. The main one is that you don't, build a website just to be there so most people think you just say right well it's like a business card um have i got a premises check do i have a business card check website check and that's it done so is my business up online if if i type in my name so for us it's bleep media so if you type in bleep media does your website come up well yes it almost always will and especially if you should it, yes we well sh- so it should come up in the google search if it doesn't that means your seo is just not non-existent but if you type in obviously if someone types in your actual url so the the actual web address so www.bleepmedia.online that will take you to our website but you should be able to type your business name just your business name into google and it should come up, come up. Yeah. straight away. People just look at a website as, I think, well, I shouldn't say, it's a generalisation, but most businesses, especially, I haven't come across one yet, really, that treats its website as the foundation of online presence, which is what it needs to be. Um, so you, if you think of, I've got a shop and a physical location, and online, I've got an online presence, the foundation of that online presence is your website, um, and it's and then, and it's it's a complicated web, yes, but that is the foundation of it. It needs to be, and now it needs to be reverse engineered. So you're building it for a purpose. It's not just an online brochure. So you've got to say, I am, I am going to sell pink marshmallows. You build the website based around. Um, funneling in customers that are going to search for pink marshmallows or whatever it is, but um, yeah, it's... Well, the, more more likely your your shop would be lollies. Yeah. And what we would do if we were building that, we would say, "What is your biggest performers?" And you might say, "Pink marshmallows is our biggest." Yeah. And so we would build a part of that website. It's called a landing page. We'd start with a landing page on pink marshmallows. So when someone types into Google "pink marshmallows," your website will come up because we've done the SEO and everything properly. And when they click on that link, it'll take them not to your lollies page. It'll actually take them to your marshmallow, pink marshmallows page. And when they have finished going through the pink marshmallows page, there's links at the bottom of that mm. to actually get them back into your website if you want them back there. But the reason yeah. websites don't convert very well is they're often too much information sure. And you end up just over informing people. They end up going, well, was, oh, gosh, I thought I wanted pink marshmallows, but now I don't know. Gosh, there's there's yellow one. Well, you know, not just yellow marshmallows, but there's what about those lolly stoppers and those yeah. those gobble, gobbly goops and the, the sweet and sours and the, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Oh, I'll have to think about it and I'll come back. Well, if you're if you're a customer and you're searching for what lolly did they eat in 1956, and you don't know the answer to that. It might actually take you to your your website that's got information about lollies and different generations and different eras and 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 you're because you're researching. So that's a customer who's who's um who's in the 
in the um in the re- like in the research phase who's trying to answer questions um someone who's punching in i want pink marshmallows is someone who's in the buying phase and who just needs to go straight to a landing page. Yeah. So there's did there's different kinds of searches and the keywords for your business are really, you know, everyone as said from researching that that industry right down to actually specifically looking for a product. Um and so you have to you really have to build content for all the buying phases and make sure that th- that person's delivered to the right buying phase. Um, because if you deliver someone, as um, the big bleeper said, with in the buying phase that ends up on a page with a whole lot more information, you take them out of buying and into more research. Yeah. And if you take someone who's doing research into a buying page, they go, oh, I don't even know that I want pink marshmallows. I don't know that that's the right thing that I need. So you'll lose them because there's not, yeah. there's not enough information. There won't be enough information. So, so it's much more complex than an online brochure. Um and really, I'm getting to a point where unless you you are committed to spending as 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 much money relatively on your online presence as you are on your physical one, um, you're slowly going out of business. Yeah, well, th- things have shifted. So, really, in the last really in the last two or three years, it's started to shift more towards online now that's more important than your retail premises. Yeah, and if you and it's true that some businesses go I don't need a website. That is somewhat true. But if you're finding if you're if, like for a physical location, it is somewhat true. But if any of your customers are searching and we'll use a pizza example again, pizza in a certain suburb and you don't have a website and you don't have re- reputation management and you don't have any of the online presence set up, then they're going to find someone else. So they're looking for pizza but they're not going to find you unless you are outside their shop and ready to walk in. Yeah, but here's here's a novel idea. What about opening a pizza shop in a factory area, not on a main road, not with passing trade, and you actually do your online marketing properly and bring people to your factory? You could have a complete sit-down area inside. You yeah. have great big kitchens. Yeah. You could have a wonderful space. Yeah. That's actually a destination, which actually, actually, that's something we haven't talked about, is laws. laws. We could do some... Yes. Um, We've written a whole lot of business laws that kind of... Well, law of destination is making some something that someone wants to visit. And um, there's a, we won't talk about it now, but there's a couple of really great ways to do that. And we've seen some really cheap ways that work particularly well. And we've seen some really expensive oh, ways that work really well. And the laws are really good because it, it definitely shows you how things have changed over the time. So yeah. how they used to be compared to how they are now. Yeah. So and we used, so there's a law for. of traffic and that law of traffic has actually changed. So it used to be you had to buy your, your, your business in the right position on the right road with the right amount of traffic. And if you did that, you were successful because yeah. you had enough traffic to, yeah. to cover all ill. Now, when we come back to the website... There's three main areas. The first one is we've got to build a site and the inside, the part you can't see, has to be SEO'd, so search engine optimised, properly. And there's a whole bunch of ways you can check that. Um, If you want to find out about that, send us an email. We'll send you a checklist. I was going to say, and not pre-2018. There's been a lot of changes this year. So um, if you've dealt with your website before this year, then it's possibly very out of date. Yeah. Well, 2016 was the last huge update. Yeah. Anything pre-2016, your website's ancient. It's actually probably not ranking very well at all. So, but um, since 2016, there's been several minor updates and there's updates every month. But basically, um, that's why you need a full-time SEO person. Now, when I say full-time, I don't mean they're like a $50,000 a year person. I'm talking about, it's probably about $1,000 a month. And you have a person that is actually there on call and they're actually doing stuff in the background for you on call. So um, that works pretty well. Well, that's and sort in, of what Bleak Media is. That's what we do. Yeah, that's part so. of what we do. So in our, if we've got we've got a $1,000 a month service and in that we do your SEO for you. So And we help you with the reputation management and we also help you with some pay-per-click. So it's a quite around $1,000 that we spend and that really helps you out. Now... The first part's SEO. The second part is building out those pages to landing pages and making sure, as Amanda said, we've got an information section, 
We've got a, so for research and we've got landing pages for our main products that people that funnel people through a sales cycle and they check out on the page. So you'll actually get a lot of sales actually on the page. The third part and the most important part in a lot of ways of your website, which is almost always totally neglected, is the content you put out. And that's social media content and blogging. And blogs can be in the form of blogs or vlogs. It doesn't matter. But Google needs to see that you are a serious business. And the best way to prove that is by doing something that is time consuming and takes time to get up online. So and it has to be regular. Yeah. You can be monthly, I suppose. You could do a blog once a well, month. Then you could do we- weekly. Weekly is okay. If you were doing monthly and you've been doing it for five years, you'd yeah, probably okay. be okay. That's true. Um, if you're weekly, but if, you're, if you've never done it and you're starting now, you need to go, you need to do some sort of, um, what do you call it, biggest loser blitz, oh, blogging yeah. blitz where you do it for three months. Every day. Well, this is the same as everything. If you've got stacks of money, we can hire bloggers for you. We can yeah. we can do all that sort of stuff, and we can get you know thirty pages written for you, thirty good blogs written for you in about you know ten days, and that would be a big effort, but you'd actually solve the problem and get and get things done. But a more natural approach is just to start blogging once a week, or twice a week, or three times a week, or daily. Yeah, we try to do something daily. And that continual putting things up tells Google that we're a real business, we're in, we're alive and we're well. Yeah, and, uh, and, and remember that a website really is about, even though it's got the funnels, which is, um, which is turning your website into, into lead generation and money, um, you've got, um, um, it, it is, you are building it for long-term organic search delivery of leads quality leads so that is the purpose of doing it and it it does take time this is another it does not an overnight fix so yeah well once it's done though like when you when you meet someone it's a beautiful thing oh yeah i saw a website the other day that was an absolute perfect piece of work and i don't know who the the um the company was behind it that did it yeah but they knew what they were doing it was a masterpiece yeah it had it was large it had lots of articles um, it was ranking very highly on Google, it and I would guess that they get several hundred new customers a week coming to their site, mm. just through normal what we call organic search, so free search on Google. So that's us for today. Websites, look into it. If you've yeah, got any questions, if, send us an email. And if you and if you have one of these beautiful websites for your business, it doesn't matter if you're a small business. If you commit to this process, you can well overrun any big major. Um, company for searches online and get the business. Yeah, for local you so, can easily. So um, don't think that I'm a small business, this isn't for me. That is one of the biggest Yeah, biggest, biggest myth. mistakes. Yeah, it's a myth and out biggest there. Biggest myth because the online online just allows a, t- a teeny, I've said it before, a teeny tiny niche and a teeny tiny shop or a teeny tiny thing. Somewhere you can, um, with an online presence, you can, you can kill it. Yeah. Absolutely kill well, it. Google has local SEO, which is designed the we can actually and that's what we do with a small business to start with. We own your local SEO. And we don't worry about trying to win Melbourne or we don't try to win Australia or the world. We worry about if you're in if yeah, you're your, in your town, your yeah. area. We just win your, that first. Yeah. And that that will get you a lot of traffic because people local are, are the ones typing. So when they type in pink marshmallows in Ringwood you're the one that comes up. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm the big bleeper. I'm the little bleeper. <laughs> have, have a great busy business day. Yeah, have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye.